Oh, I see me now. <laughs> okay, okay, iPad's not working. Look, we got this set up, so I've got an iPad that I'm looking at, and it's frozen. Okay, I can see my picture. I need to move on. No. Uh, you, can you see that? Yep. Hold it down a second. Give me a second. Gerald, can you yeah. tilt it a little bit more? Oh. Right there. Okay. Bring it towards you a little bit. There we go. Okay, this is one I did with something called uh, translucent powders. But I brought this one just to show you the rim treatment. Rim doesn't have to be smooth. It can be textured. And of course, this is a classic clue style rim with I think three colors on that. And here's another the same. Uh, of course there's nothing in the center because he didn't do anything in the center. Now this is one I had done previously. Um, the blues here, the gold, the red are all the metallic dyes. The rest of that is, is regular dye. And Tim and I were talking about this yesterday that it doesn't seem to have a, the iridescence and it may be because it's lacquered. And that's just a burn pattern that I did earlier this week. We're not gonna do that today, but just to show you the rim treatment. That's another rim treatment. This is what we're gonna burn. And this is one I had pre-burn, but we're going to color that one. And I'm going to be changing blanks three times, I think it is. And I'm using a worm screw, basically just like Clues does. This one I drill 2364 hole and it varies depending on what kind of wood you're using. If you're using soft wood, you would want a smaller hole. Uh, and I went three quarters of an inch deep. You can do less by using a spacer that you would put on your chuck to make the distance smaller. But this blank is plenty large enough that three quarters of an inch would be right in there. Uh, look at that going all the way to the bottom. Okay. Got to put on the safety gear. just in case anybody wants to know. Lost the audio. Lost it? It's this right here on the back. There, now you're back. In the back. Is it back now? You got one more thing. Ah, oh, wait a minute, over here. Okay. This drawing is actually on our website and it's clues. Slide it's, it over a little bit. There you go. Um, and basically this is half of a platter divided into thirds. For the OG, it starts a gentle slope here, goes down further and then comes up on the last third. And you start cutting this first, this third right here, then you go on to the others. to make myself some notes so I wouldn't leave anything out today. And then I almost did. Of course, you know you don't need to tool this while you're lace pen. And we all don't do that, right? Not unless it's real sharp. Is that a question or a comment? I couldn't hear it. 
I said, you don't move it unless it's real sharp. <laughs> okay. This is lamb nice and lamb first so that we know where our edge is when we turn it. Uh, any questions, don't hesitate to ask. All right. This particular blank is kind of nasty. It's got some really bad cracks in it. And so that's why I'm doing just the back on this one. I'm not going to do any sanding because I don't want to run the guys out of here. And that's why we're doing this in stages. Now, to do your OG, I like to do a full cut. Jimmy likes to do a fish. Um, and he comments about looking between him and his daddy. And of course, they're always going at one another. Something that Cleve does, when he does the, he finishes the back. And now I'm going to show you. This is, is set for expansion mode on my Nova, on my 50 mil uh, jaws. And I'm going to mark it, and then we'll cut it, and I'll show you the tool I use for that. If you're really good, you can do that the first time. So if I take two, I'm not that good. And this is a little tool that uh, Mike Peace came up with. And I think several other people have copied it. And it's a Harbor Freight. I don't remember what it was now. I want to say it was a skew. And you cut this notch in it. And uh, this is a slight angle. If you see right there, you can see the angle. I to do like candy and take stuff off. And uh, I found this to be my easiest way to do my dovetail jaws. Because like this, you could use almost anything when you don't have a um, tailstock in the way. And you look like to go in and kind of draw it back. Giving a good trip, but uh, and I went in just a little bit further than I wanted because I'm gonna cut part of that off. And something that a lot of people don't really understand about doing a uh, lost my audio again. Is it back? Huh? Not getting it. It's me. It's not. Okay. <laughs> we are having trouble communicating today. Is that? This doesn't have to be tremendously deep. You can do it at one eighth of an inch. This is uh, a little bit over an eighth. Uh, because if you're hauling a huge bowl, it makes a difference maybe. But if you're doing a plate or a platter, you're not putting, your forces are going against that and you rarely have a problem. The main thing is the shoulder that you're gonna keep right here. Uh, you want that to be, and I can't give you a rule of thumb, I usually make mine about three-eighths, so we're going to draw a line. That's where we want our shoulder, and as long as you've got a good shoulder, I'm rubbing the camera too, as long as you've got a good shoulder here, you shouldn't have a problem with this breaking out. Now, you can't have problems with soft wood. There are a lot of things that can cause you problems. You want you don't want to do this on any kind of faulted wood. It's just not going to work good. And well, let's see. And if you want to make this 
shoulder here real crisp. You can use another tool besides a ball guide. Uh, but when you sand, you have to be really careful if you want it crisp. So it, it is very easy to sand that stuff out. Now, you take some of these marks, that tool marks out, a nice little shear straight, does wonders. Now, mind you, these are not going to be perfectly smooth. I don't claim to be that good by any means, but you see the angel hair scrapings there. And well, that turned out not bad. But you see, I still got my cracks. And that's why we're not using this one. Any questions? Thank God for wrenches, huh? I added enough handle on this so it will actually jam into the lathe bed. All right. Now we'll get out number two. A worm screw out. At this stage, it's not hypercritical that this runs perfectly true on the back. But if you look at that, it's pretty close. You can tell better than something hard. It's got a little bounce, so it's not absolutely perfect, but it's close enough that you're never going to be able to see that unless you're really looking hard. Okay. Now, find my pencil, not my regular place, I had to take it out. Again, we're doing thirds. We're going to do two thirds of this as a bowl, so roughly right here, maybe a little bit further out. We're going to go in this far, though, to do our rim prep. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn the rim and leave this center like it is. And what that does, it, it allows you to cut a crisp line here once we color this rim and start on the inside of the bowl. So we're going to take a lot off to start with to get down to the right thickness. Okay, you don't want to wait till you get out the thickness that you want to start doing this. Because what you can actually do is from this point. Now, another point right here, you want this to be inward. In other words, you want this curve, you want it, it's got to come up to a peak, and then it goes inward. And I'll show you on this. And the reason for that is when somebody holds this, their thumbs want to go inside like this. And so they're attracted to the center. Your old panel just like Okay. We're getting the camera adjusted here. All right. So you want to feel like that. 
And so that's the way you want to do it. Um, Can you push your overhead camera away from you just slightly? Hold it long. Let's go. Okay, thanks. Good camera adjustment there. You know, all these demos that we watch on Zoom, um, and then I'm on a, a uh, forum and we talk about camera positions and stuff, and you pick up tips. It's Cindy likes her little paper on me so you can see it up from above and see where it is. And she scrapes it off the dust all the time. Can't ever laugh about that kind of stuff. By the way, how many of you guys signed up for John Jordan this afternoon? What's going on? Somebody. Okay, I guess I'm the only one. Maybe I'll read it to you. Yeah, I know. You can't talk, you know. By pressing your space bar or and reading yourself and you know, okay. Is there a way you can make uh, Gerald's mic a little hotter? He's very muffled. Okay. How's that? Is that better? A little better. I got that it's almost in my mouth. Is that better? I can fix it better. I'll be trying it out. I think that little cat got me out a bit. Let me take this mic off and I will turn it up. Because I think I've got a good bit of gain left. I don't drop it. I drop it. I've had a lot of dropsy lately. Okay, is that better? Yeah. Yeah, that, I think that's better. Always use a technical term back off and punt. All else fails, we could switch to a camera mic. But you couldn't hear me with this thumb down. Uh, I need to put back on my belt. Belt's too tight, I guess. Hmm, whose fault is that? Well, shoot. Put in my pocket, please. And I'll go another way. And I'm going to switch gadgets in my half. Way I get a, it's a better cut with this half, but I can usually get a much cleaner than I can with a 5 eight. Okay, I'm not doing it right now, but it's something to think about when you're turning flatter. The closer you get to the center, You need to slow down to get that good clean cut. But it's not turning as fast in the center as it is out here on the edge. I think that one's ready for sanding. So now we will switch again. Yeah. Yeah. One thing that I forgot to bring over here. <laughs> Was the die? Tim, sir, if you will look in that cabinet over there, the one with the rosette on the front, yes, sir. and bring me those two uh, boxes of die, yes, sir. Put everything out except the die.
as usual there's always some this is the one that's already pre-turned uh get me an overhead sorry hang on this side he's leaving the box okay Something? Yeah. Your okay. The back sanded, and you see a slight round over there. I don't know if you can see that on camera or not, because I sanded it. Um, and the front is turned and sanded. There was a big old hole there. I filled it up with CA. It just kind of enhances a little bit, but we'll see. All right. Now, for this, I will have to sand. And these are my dies. Mostly I use um, chestnut stains. But I do have some Chromacraft. Uh, they call it Nick, Nick Agar Signature Series. But Hold that up again, Gerald. And they're good too. They're a little darker than the uh, chestnut stains, uh, but Tim and I discussed it and we kind of like that better. But there's some things that you have to have a different type of color. So for that, chestnut stains. Like you want opaque, a more opaque, it's more opaque than Okay, I'm going to start with black, if I can find it. And let's see. I actually have my little rags in here that I use. Of course, Jimmy uses paper towels, but it's not like I'm turning with it. Well, Now, one thing about doing this this way is that this has got some good figure in it in, in a couple of places, but it's not like the blanks that we used for turning the clues platters. Those were highly figured. Uh, matter of fact, I think Jimmy said something about how nice the <laughs> lumber was that we use, or the timber. Timber. <laughs> it's got to be timber. Put the British accent in there. Oh, and because of the way I sanded this, it's not taking really, really good, but it's on there. I am not going to burn it off. I've mm. just never gotten into that. It is a good way to dry it. But we can do this and get the same thing. While I am looking for a cop. And now I am going to sand that. One thing here that you get when you sand this off, the uh, die has shellac in it. So these pads that you're going to use to sand it off are totally garbage. So what I do, I save some. They're wore out as far as sanding is concerned, but they're plenty fine for doing this. And then I don't lose a good piece of sandpaper. Okay, I'm a Yankee guy, really, from Louisiana. But <laughs> When you do this, you can do it in phases. In other words, you can make less sanded out out here, more in there. It's just up to you. All right, that's the first color. Where's that top? 
And now let's see. That's what I read. I believe red and yellow makes a sunset. Orange, yep. Um, and what you with this, you can put it on the whole thing, which is what I'm going to do. Or you can leave some places blank. And in those blank places, you can put your other color. Okay, I see right in here the curl is coming out in there. And that's what you want to see. Yeah, let's turn that one on. <laughs> if you guys have any questions while he's turning, don't hesitate to ask. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I find it right. I heard it hit that dust one. Okay, this one. We're just gonna light, very lightly sand it because we don't want to take too much of this off. And what another thing you can do right here is you can come to spot. And take some off. And then you can, you can go on the outside or the inside. Yeah, that's why you're going to throw it away. And now, let's see, a little yellow. We'll leave the big top this time. I don't have this in a little bottle. <laughs> don't tell me y'all don't have fumble fingers. Never, never. Okay. And this, you can kind of blot it around some places. And Tim, sir. can you get me a box, a can of that uh, lacquer? Yes, sir. I have well, to do this to you. Know. On the end? Yeah, got it. Um, this is something you do have to do is seal this. Now, you might get your final finish on it. But you do need to get something on it. Of course, remember when Jimmy's doing this, this is his final finish. I, I will say one thing. Don't try doing this with acrylic and turn the lathe on to dry it. It will run. And I think this probably would too. So we'll just talk a minute. Um, we had the hands on. You're on the camera. Hmm? You're on the camera. I'm on the camera. Yeah, you can look at them now. Oh. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> when uh, we did the hands on, I <laughs> I had the Viceroy Hunter and. Uh, I cut undercut this thing and, and uh, Jimmy came over and looked at it and he said, what'd you do that with? <laughs> of course I had to tell him. <laughs> it was kind of interesting moment. When we uh, were uh, turning the inside of one of the, that um, ash piece that we did at the, the uh, Jimmy was outside so they can smoke break. And Michael, he had bought the Clues Mate, I forget which one, one or two. And Jimmy heard it 
and came in and said, oh, no, you can't pull backwards with this tool. Now, that's recognizing the sounds of wood. It, it's amazed me. I could not believe it, that he actually heard it. So this is dry enough. Now, remember our thirds. So we're going to come about right in there to do our undercut. I'll slow down just a little bit. Okay, here we go. Hope we don't skitter all over the place. Hope I'll put this down. Sometimes when I'm doing pops and stuff and going back and forth, I find myself with my heel up. I'm <laughs> doing it with the egg. <laughs> And then I go, okay, let's see what we got. All right, that's not a full undercut there, but that you see the crisp line that we've got between our color and our wood. And I just, I kind of prefer bowl gouges. I like my carbide stuff. And for hollowing, you just don't have to do that. The bolt removal. to take this big bite and then if I don't have it, I'm going to get on that small way with the egg up on my mouth. Oh, you can't do that. Something to remember here is to remember you've got an expansion mode on the bottom. So you don't have as much bottom as it looks like you have. In this case, it's about an eighth of an inch, uh, maybe three sixteenths. So we're going to see. We've got three eighths plus a sixteenth. It, this is homemade. And what I did was I cut some lines here, one eighth of an inch each line. The black lines are quarters. It makes it easy to tell what your depth is. Of course, sometimes you can't get to the bottom. You're out, way out here where it's thicker, depending on what, you, what your shape is. But it helps a lot. So let's see. We are very close to it. Consider what kind of bottom do you want on this plate? Do you want it to be flat all the way across? Do you want it to be shaped like the bottom of your bowl is? And let's consider that with your depth. I kind of like it a little bit more flat and further down on the outside. I'm not getting a really good cut on this for some reason. Never have been good at doing that, so I'm going to do it. I'm sorry, Frank. Does that make it a break? 
it is a negative rate. Uh, you can do this on your own. Uh, I think my top angle is somewhere close to 25. Total included angle is about 70. Now, okay, this is where we get an undercut on the side. So you gotta come in here like this and actually go back underneath to get an undercut. Don't do that. With the hunter, you can come back with some. Just be lightly. Don't try to take a deep cut backwards. Uh, and what Jimmy calls that is self-feeding. It does self-feed a little, but not near as bad as his did. Boy, that was, it was nasty. But Michael did that one. It just happened. You gotta learn. Okay. That's at the point where we could sand it. So now we're going to change our setup. Yeah. Better look at it. And you see, it's got some nice figure in there. It really wouldn't be bad to. Do some kind of color treatment on the inside. Uh, I don't know how many y'all do Bradford pear, but Bradford pear has some real nice curl. And uh, it's because of all those branches putting the weight on the outside. It does cause compression. And that's part of what they think causes curl. Uh, there are certain trees that do it better than others though. Like in cherry, you'll find some occasionally, but not a lot of curl. And we gotta do a little transition in equipment. So if I can get the crew to entertain y'all while I do this. Gerald. If Tim had brought his guitar, he could play some music for us. Uh, uh. All right, I muted Gerald for a minute, just a minute, so we don't get a lot of feedback, hopefully. Anybody have any questions up at this point? Comments? Shall we keep him going, or are we ready to quit? Don't even get any feedback on that, Gerald. Nobody's gonna even got comments. So. He's doing good, except we're still having trouble understanding him. You're, um, Phil, you're class a lot cleaner, Gerald. Yeah, part of the problem is he has that face mask on and the mic is, is kind of making it a little fuzzy, I think. He so also, it goes down in volume when the machine is turned on. Yeah, is... that. Now we're getting a lot of feedback from somewhere. That was me. <laughs> I'm feedback myself there. How's that? I don't know. Can you guys still hear me or not? Yeah, we. Okay. I hear you. That's all really that's important. Just kidding. <laughs> well, you have an amateur operating the cameras today, too. So, you know, normally Gerald does this and uh, somebody else is demoing. So, this time you get me 
operating the camera and, and him doing the demo. So. Let's see what camera I'm on. I don't even know anymore. There we go. There we go. You want the stool here? Yeah. Okay. Well, we really appreciate Gerald doing this for us today. It's always good to have our own club members do demos. Uh, we're really, really hoping we can get back together in person in January. Uh, it's, man, we miss actual, you know, face-to-face -face fellowship with you guys. It's just nothing, not, not quite the same doing the Zoom. It has kept us out going through the year. We've had some great demos. Uh, professional and club members with Sammy and Gerald and Tim doing stuff. So it's it's been great. So, all right. I'm going to turn it back over to Gerald if I can figure out how to unmute him and get him going again. Let's see. Ah, this is a little different using it. There we go. All right, Gerald, you should be back on. Okay. This is a stick and burn pattern. Oh. You might want to explain what that is. What, I'm fixing to show. <laughs> it's got a backing on it that you have to peel off. It does have a break on the edge of the whole page. It comes in a page, but you know, like a sheet of paper. Uh, but you got to peel this backing off to stick it on. There's your adhesive. And really hard part of this is centering it, which I'm never really happy with my centering, but close. And then you shove it on. Okay, that's the stick part. It's got adhesive on the back. Um, when you do these, you don't want to leave this on for a long, long time. Like for instance, okay, you started today and you're going to finish it next Saturday. Not a real good idea because it kind of tends to stay if uh, you leave it too long, like any kind of adhesive. And this comes from, everybody's always asking horse stuff. Comes from right there, Welburn Gourd Farms. This and the, the paints I'm gonna to use too, all come from the same place. Uh, if y'all remember those that were here, Brett Whitworth demonstrated the stick and burns last year, but I think mostly he did a drawing uh, that he had done or he had copied from something. What you can, there's plain sheets of this stuff. You can actually print your own designs or designs you get off the web. Uh, I am using a burn master unit. I can get my, there, there it is. With a, a razor tip pen. This pen gets hotter than the one on the burn master and, and stays a more consistent temperature. This is one with changeable, uh, I don't know, are you seeing that? Yeah. With changeable trip, tips, but you make your own. They have some that you can buy. You can also buy pens that are pre-made. Uh, but I've made some of these tips. Okay, the ones without the brass on them I made. The others are the Burn Master tips that go in the Burn Master pen, which is, like that. It's got two little screws that that slips down in a hole a bit. Um, and Craig what was the... gave us, when we did the demo with um, Sammy, he gave us a piece of this. And what it is, it's actually a sandpaper, but they use this in surgery to sharpen their tools that they're using. But when you're burning, you do have to occasionally get the carbon off because what it does it doesn't heat evenly and this one don't seem to be heating up yeah it is okay Gerald, what was the make of the hand this is a razor tip thank you probably can't see that razor tip right there and you have to have an adapter to go into the patch cable on the burn master uh, 
Burnmaster is a little different than most of them because it's got a um, quarter inch jack. And there's something different about this tip. I don't know what, but there is, but there's adapters that you can get. There's adapter that comes with it, the Burnmaster, believe it or not. Um, the hardest part for me about doing this is doing circles. So a draw might be easier way to do it. And I turn the piece at the same time. And we're gonna paint this, or not this one, but another one. So I'm not sure how critical the straight lines are. It's nice to have them. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is, instead of just having y'all watch me burn lines, I'm gonna do this, these two outside circles. Oops, got out of line. And then I'll show you how to peel it off. There are several tools you can use. I started out using an X-Acto knife. And uh, let's see, last year, I think it was, I went to an estate sale and bought a, um, a little engineer's tool kit with, I uh, forget, I had seven or eight Starrett tools. And it had a bunch of these little pointy tools. I have no idea what they were intended for, but they worked real good for getting this off. Uh, any kind of little pointy tool, and pocket knife would work. Because uh, you have to lift the corner. And once you get a corner lifted, then you can use tweezers to peel the whole thing. I wish I had Don Ritchie here. We do. He is we on. do. Yep. Yep. Well, how about that? Hey, Gerald. Hey, Don. Why wouldn't or wouldn't it be easier uh, to burn those two round lines while your platter is still on the lathe? Uh, mark them with a, uh, to get the right distance and stuff and then stick a wire to them and burn them. Uh, uh, you could, but you may get out of this pattern. Uh, the, the thing about putting anything on the lathe and then taking it off yeah. is you've got to, to have the same symmetry. And if you get off a little bit, which I mean, even me looking at that, I can see it's a little off. Yeah. Uh, You're talking about getting a little, not being dead center in the middle of the bottom of the plate. Correct. Yeah. This one, this pattern has a center reference right there. That's what I was going to say, yes. But most of them do not. Yeah. They're not intended for that, so they don't make it that way. Um, oh, by the way, this little link right here gets hot. See? Okay. It, now, you make a good point about on the lathe, but I would think more it would be a good just to put register marks on it in order to help you. You could, but remember, if you put those register marks, your pattern's got to cover it. Yeah. So it's got to be exactly what the pattern is. Are you sure you can put a register mark exactly the size of this pattern? Unless you put another line outside. Gerald, my, yes. my, thought, my thought was if you if you put your pattern on there and stuck it on there mm -hmm. uh, while it's on the lathe and get it centered, take your skew and put it against that line that you're that you're peeling off now, that yeah. line and the inside line, and cut just a little mark in it, and th and that would take your that would leave your pattern still attached in the dead center, right then it would give you a place where those little marks were cut with the edge of your skew to go in and put a wire there, speed it up and burn that, you know, real quick. Okay. I'm not as meticulous as you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that meticulous. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think the issue, though. Anyway, you, you fill up the edge. I, you see I what was I just thinking that. it might be a faster way to do it. 
The issue is, though, you still have all those other circles in the center, and you might as well do it all the same method. Well, you have to index here regardless. Okay, I'm gonna, I could get this up without this, but I'll just show you my other tool. This is actually out of, gosh, this is made in Pakistan. Okay, is that where all surgical tools are made? This is out of a surgery kit. But for who gets a little stuff, this is imperative to have tweezers or something. Uh-oh, missed the line. Uh, to peel that. And we're done with that one for now. Now. Gerald, yeah. is that uh, pattern reached? Can you remove it and put it back on if, if I miss the center? You might can, but uh, I wouldn't guarantee that working. Because I will miss the center when I stick it in there, that's for sure. Yeah. If you lightly, if you don't press it down, yeah, you, don't you probably could do that. It could, could be done. And the thing about this, it's got real good adhesive on it. So... I don't know how often you can peel it and stick it. You want right. to make sure there's no dust on the on your. Uh, I'm gonna lay these upside down so y'all can see these colors. And I kind of went hog wild with this after I used the first one. I said, "Oh, I love that." And Tim kind of got me started on this. Tim's your fault. Okay. Okay. Now. These are the brushes I use, and this is the, this, and you can reuse these things, which, Tim, there's a cup over there, would you, uh, the water's down on the other end of the counter, if you'd put some water, and maybe some water in it already. Where did you get the brushes, Tim? I mean, uh, Gerald? These came from, oh, yeah, a good story about that while he's doing that. These are cosmetic brushes, both of these. And from Gord Farms, this is about seven bucks. Does that suffice? Yes, thank you. Um, there's a pack of 20. The pointed one here is called Fine Tip Applicator Mascara Brush. The other one is called Micro Brushes. And this is also a cosmetic brush. And the other one, well, thought I had it. There it is. Where do you buy those? Look on Amazon. Um, well, we're Gord has them as well. Look, yeah, and well, we're Gord. But on know. Amazon, you're going to get about 100 of, of these for eight bucks. You're paying seven for 20 at Gord Farms. These. I don't remember the price, but they also come in hundreds and two hundreds. Now you can just use one for each color and then depending on what you're doing, but you can wash these out. Now note, it does stay in it. If you see that one, it's colored, it's got several colors in it, but it doesn't seem to affect the colors going on. If you're doing a large area, artist brush. Uh, but this is not anything large about this. And Hardly anything fine. Uh, let's see. I shake these, but there's nothing on it saying anything about shaking them. And it is really thick. Oh, open this up. What is the brand of the paint again? What is that? It's, uh, it's called Gord Master Finishes. Hey. It's metallic gourd ink. Why would you want to thin it? I don't know. <laughs> you know me, I'm, I'm going to try something, you know. And like anything you're painting, it's best to get a thick coat on there to start with. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit. You don't quit moving that camera, he's going to get out of line. <laughs> <laughs> I 
and you see my lines are not really good but if you, when you paint you cover it and then come back with a fine tip right there and get that corner and another thing about putting a good heavy coat on it's kind of self levels not completely but almost and you you don't have those brush marks now when you get to this part it's totally the eye of the beholder if you want to put different colors on each side of this petal you can there are flowers that have two colors And this stuff is um, seven dollars a bottle, I think, six ninety five something. Like that. And they have sales all the time. If you go in and get on their um, mailing list, they will send you all kind of stuff, and you would not believe what people do with gourds. My sister in law used to do this gourd stuff, and she did some fantastic stuff. But uh, I, I see. Amazing. Any questions? Comments? Y'all want me to go on or you want to stop? No comment. I guess we're doing on. Oh, wait a minute. What was that? I hear the comment. I said, "Go on, Gerald." <laughs> For those of you who may have come in late, we are recording this. So oh. you'll be able to go on the website and watch the recording. It may be several days before I get it on there because I will have to edit it. And also the previous ones that were done by club members are also on the website. If you log into the website and go to documents, you'll see the uh, document you can pull up there with links to the different videos. Unfortunately, I lost Tim's recording. He said he was happy about that. I don't know why. I'm fine with it. You're good. <laughs> I may get him to do it over and just record it here in the studio. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Come to my shop. Just, I can do it in your shop. We won't no, have to. Somebody come to my shop. I don't care for it. <laughs> he, said, he said, if you want to know how. Come to his shop. <laughs> Gerald, you said those are iridescent paint, correct? They're metallic, metallic okay. which gives an iridescent look uh, to me. I, I guess that's what iridescence is. I'm not sure what it is. I was just wondering if it's like the uh, platters we did with the iridescent paint. If you had a black background, it would you put that over, does it show through or is it? I don't think it will. This is opaque. This is covered. And I'll show you about doing this um, where I put the CA here. There's two blocks of CA um, and see what it does. Okay, I'm going to do a green leaf over this black and see how that covers it. I'm 
I'm not seeing anything through it. Okay, I wasn't sure. So I don't think that would make any difference. How long does that take to dry? You got me. I have not tested it. I just leave it when I'm done and don't mess with it. Um, but after what Tim said, and we talked about the color on the other one, although I don't see the metallic in that violet, I can see it in the green. Can you see the difference in the green? I don't see it in the, in the violet, in the gold that is there. So it could be some colors don't show up as well, or maybe I needed to stir it or something. Uh, Besides what else is a leaf? I guess it's in the out of the hover again. So we're gonna do these leaves down here. It's kind of fun. It's, I mean, it's, you're just sitting there doing this. To me, it's better than burning. Burning is tedious in my opinion, but uh, you know, some folks just could sit all day and do that, like Sammy. By the way, Sammy got a deer Monday. And for those that don't know, he's in a cast because he broke his wrist. Hand. Hand. Okay, hand. Uh, and he, the doctor said he could take this cast off and shoot and then put it back on. That's what he did. The doctor's a deer hunter. <laughs> Okay. Uh, let's see. What about another color green? I have roused my curiosity. I guess I might have to ask them about this shaking or if I need to put something in there and stir it. Because I do not know. This one is called. Oh, I didn't tell you all the colors. The green is uh, emerald forest. The gold is sunshine gold. And the violet is violet frost. If you look on their website, they do have, uh, I guess you call them specials, where you have multiple color sets that you can purchase at a so it gives it cuts down the price per bottle okay This one is called Steel Silver. I can really see this getting addicting. This is fun. Kind of like a kid with a box of crayons. <laughs> Stay in the lines. <laughs> Yeah, that song. Keep it behind. Oh, yeah, keep it between the lines, Daddy. Gosh. And I have made errors and wiped them off. This is water based. Well, it just depends on how aggressive you want to get doing that. But it can be done. And I have used this on, and you'll see in show and tell, I've used these colors on my bell ornaments. And uh, we kind of got wild the last time at the Ag, and Herman was turning birdhouses. And Phil and I hadn't done that. So we got started too. Uh-oh, have it. <laughs> Those are addictive too. Really easy to do. 
Uh, basically just spindle turning. Which that brings up a good point, guys. We had a really good time at the Ag Museum this last time for the, was it Fall Fest? Yes. Uh, Harvest Fest. Harvest Fest. I'm sorry. Had a really good turnout. Uh, several hundred people every day. And uh, they were actually buying. So Gerald and Herman had some really good days there selling stuff. We actually added 13 new contacts. Uh, I really thought some of them would be here today, but that's life. How many we have? I'm sorry? How many do we have? How many on the lot? Well, if you subtract out how many times you're logged on, <laughs> there's 16 total. Okay. Not too bad. Gerald? Yes. Um, the the uh, Gord Place, uh, did you say WelburnGordFarms.com? Yes. 1L. Hold that back up, Joe. That's what I put in. Welburn. There you go, guys. Okay. That's what I typed in. Didn't Maybe something funky going on with the internet today, and that could be why we had troubles earlier. Uh, but yeah, that happens. It is Saturday. Every, everybody's on the internet. You would think it'd be big enough to carry us like a worldwide. Well, you would, but the problem being, have you ever counted the number of devices that you have in your home that are connected to the internet? I get this every year. Get this from my son. We he got a thermostat. 84. 84. We read 1984. The, oh. the okay, sorry, I didn't ever read that. Big brother is watching over you. Yeah, well, everything you do, every keystroke. And if you're worried about that, you need to go out in the woods somewhere. I am and cut off the electricity. Oh, Tim and I were talking about the Amish. Uh, no electricity set by generator, no telephones, no TV. What else, Tim? No pictures, no indoor toilet, no cell phone, no kind of a phone, no refrigeration other than the ice house. I wouldn't make a good Amish. I kind of <laughs> like it myself, but you know, my wife kind of balked at it. <laughs> Especially the outdoor toilet. The toilet part got her. <laughs> Real quick, guys, we were talking about the Ag Museum. The next event is December 10th and 11th, and it is from 5 to 8 p.m. And it's their. Uh, Home for the holidays? Home for the holiday. And they're probably going to feed us while we're down there, I believe. They normally do. Yeah, they, they started out with uh, what they call breakfast. And I think a lot of these foods that we get come from the Egg Council because they're big sponsors of the Egg Meat. Okay, this is called Christmas Red. Um, not a little bad. Joe, maybe four or five more minutes and then we'll go to show and tell. Okay. Uh, one thing that y'all can do to save cost, Tim and I went together and split the freight, which wasn't but about $7, I think. But still, if a couple of you get together and you want to get five or six colors, or another thing you can do is split them. Uh, you can pour this in another bottle. 
Uh, Michael and I have done that on a couple of items <clears throat> in the past. You're back on camera. I am on camera. Yeah. Okay. Just barely. <laughs> no, you're good. I can push it down. Oh, you can actually see yourself now? I can. Barely. Yeah, you're good. That's that's stop action on my iPad. <laughs> okay. Let's see. This one is called Ocean Mist. This is one that I saw on a gourd that really took me away on this colors. Uh, it was one with a parrot, I think. If you get outside the line, no big deal. You don't have to have the black showing. It's up to you. By the way, I have not sold any of these yet. But I think we're going to have a lot of Christmas presents this year. <laughs> <laughs> and really, there's not any more time in this than there is a, a good bowl that you put a good finish on. Uh, and it's kind of enjoyable. Try to keep talking, but I'm, having, I'm running out of words, guys. You know, I have 2,300 words a day, and I think I've used 1,800 of them already. Let's see. What else have we got? Well, it's five till 11, four minutes till 11. So. Yeah. This one's called Copper Rush. Let's see. We'll do this color and then we'll do the show and tell, which you're going to have to come over and pull it up. Okay. I had, look, I had it at the bottom. It might be there, a file. My hands get a little, okay, shaky's not the right word. Okay, it is shaky. I said, um, if you rest your hand down on the rim when you're doing this, makes it easier. These, when you're doing these edges. What's the thing again here is you're only limited by your imagination. It doesn't have to match nature. It doesn't have to be what somebody else likes. Unless you want to sell it. Okay, Bob Ross. I'm not doing any happy trees. Happy flowers, maybe. <laughs> saw a DVD set of his uh, shows the other day. I don't remember where it was. I saw that. Okay, this is where I could have used the big brush. This, for some reason, is a little thicker. This bottle. It could be an old bottle. Who knows? I'm about to be meant to be an artist, artiste. Well, I think all wood turners have somewhat of an art, artiste in them. That's what my daughter-in-law says. Uh, yeah, she's I'm still looking for my a flatterer. <laughs> So 
some of us it takes longer to come come out. <laughs> Still under development. Well, I might start doing a lot of boxes. I got uh, into my wood pile the other day. I said, gosh, I got all this wood, still bark on it, half logs. I start cutting it up to cut the bark off. Okay, half that log's gone. <laughs> so, so I wind up with a lot of box blanks. Some nice faulting, though. By the way, at the egg, I sold my box that Tim likes. Mm -hmm. That egg, yep. I asked Pill you box. to sell <laughs> Well, you didn't offer to buy it. No, I didn't want to buy it. I just didn't want you to sell it. Oh, gee. That's a nice piece. Is that helping out a fella or what? Great piece. Yeah, what? Well, but yeah, yeah I'm not come down. I have no example to go by. Look, if you don't want to turn in front of people, come down and tell people about what we're doing. Yeah. Because we can always use somebody as a crowd control and liaison. It makes a huge difference to what we're doing if people know exactly what, what's going on. I mean, we talk some, but it's kind of difficult. We're behind the screen, have a shield on, um, and uh, it's hard to get all the words out there. Of course, with kids, I, I tell everybody that comes, hey, you're not turning a bowl to finish unless it's about three inches in diameter. Because these kids, their attention span is about, what'd you say, Mike? Uh, <laughs> Tim. <laughs> well, it's, it's age appropriate. Normally, their attention span is about, at the most, about 10 minutes, maybe maybe 15, but normally it's about 10, and they're moving on, and they want to touch everything, so they're, you know, they're hyper. So 10 minutes is about the limit, 10 to 12, maybe 15 minutes. Of course, they all got Cokes and candy bars, and that, you know, they're fired up with that, and, uh, you know, but it's a good experience. It's a good experience for us. Um, and you meet all, all kinds of people. One, one session we have had a lady brought her family in. Uh, you guys may remember she was from Australia. She, she stayed with us a long time. You'll find that the, the, the moms and dads that have homeschool children, they, they're a little, actually, they're a little more attentive because they're actually in school mode if you if you understand that and and so you know we're helping them uh their their, their educational process they're they're going through that and and it does make a difference so anybody that comes down if you just stand there you're welcome to drink our coffee and eat our donuts just like if you were turning but to be, have somebody there to explain what we're doing why you know let the kids pick up some sawdust. And in fact, I get a lot of fun. I just say, hey, put a, get you a handful of that and put it in your pocket and take it home. Of course, mom and dad don't like that, but I get a kick out of it. <laughs> and they, you know, it's just, a, it's a good, uh, and quite honestly, if I hadn't, I wouldn't be turning turning the uh, Herman Ainsworth model of uh, birdhouses, which I'm going to finish today. Uh, you, you learn something every time, so it's it's a uh, it's a good experience. It really is, and everybody that came down this last time, um, I really appreciate it. it uh, that way, one or two don't have to do everything. We can kind of spell ourselves, and it. it